Hello guys, in this video we want to create a food ordering website, but this time using React.js. My name is Nasir and I'm your instructor in this course. I started programming about 16 years ago and man, I love it. This is the homepage of the website. It has a header, a search box, a tags bar and the thumbnails of the page. You can log into the website using username and the password. You're going to have a beautiful toast message like this. You can add foods to the cart, remove foods from the cart, change the quantity of the foods. Coming back, add another food. This will be your cart page. You can proceed to checkout, enter your name and address. You can click on find my location to find your location. And going to the payment page. On the payment page, you can do the payment using PayPal. After completing the purchase, you will be moved to the order page and you will see the state of payment. And if you forgot your order ID, you will have it on the order list right here. So by clicking on the show order, you will see the same page again. And the orders page have different states, new, currently we have no new, paid and so on. On the profile, you can update your profile like this and at the bottom you can enter your current password and new password for updating your account's password okay this was for the demo let's jump into the installation part the first thing that we want to install is node.js we need it for using the npm the package manager that we need for installing everything for our project it's better to use the lts version because it is more stable if you click on this button it will automatically download based on your operating system the second thing that we need is the visual studio code of course we need it for the development process and you can click here for downloading the visual studio code and the third one is the git it is a version control system that helps us to manage our code changes here once again you can click on the download based on your operating system here we go these three are all you need for this course let's go to the next step that is configuring the visual studio code after opening the Visual Studio, click on this icon that is the extensions icon. I have four extensions that I recommend you to install. The first one is ES7 React Redux React Native JS Snippets. It has over 7 million and a half installs and it helps you to write your React code easier. The second thing is ESLint that will be matched with the ESLint configuration of your React project and will show you errors on the Visual Studio code. Next extension is this material icon theme. It is just a preference. I don't want to show the icons like normal. I like them to have this beautiful look. And the last one is Prettier that helps your code code to be well formatted it's a formatter you can use it by a keyboard shortcut or running a visual studio code command or from the manage button here you can select settings and here search for format on save and check this one so anytime you save your file it will be automatically formatted so you're going to have a more beautiful code okay let's go for the next step that is creating the project in this lesson, we want to create our React project, then add the header to it and make it like this. So follow this lesson to know how to do it. We want to start by creating our project. So open up the VS Code and from the Explorer, select Open Folder. Go to your desktop folder and create a new folder and give it the name of foodmine-react-js or any other names that you want. So this is the name of our project and we will put our front end and back end inside this folder now we want to start creating the front end project that is the react project so from the terminal menu select new terminal then write mpx create dash react dash app and give it the name of front end and press enter it could take several minutes so please be patient okay the project is created now go to the front end folder then write npm start for running the project. As you can see, the project is up and running inside the browser. Now we want to clear everything and start working on the header. Let's get back to the code, close the terminal and open up the front end folder. 
and inside the src folder remove the app css we don't want test so remove app test js remove the logo and remove setup tests then open up the index css and remove everything at the first line of this file i want to add my favorite font from the google that is quicksand you can copy this from the code changes in the description below now on the next line select all the tags and set box sizing to border box for having predictable box sizing then select the html tag and set the font size to 18 pixel we need it for the rem unit because we want a rem unit inside this project next select the body set its margin to zero and set its font family to this quicksand and sans serif as the alternative font now select the a tags and set its text decoration to none because we don't want the a tags to have underline okay we're done with the index css file close it and open the explorer now open the app.js file close the explorer remove everything before the app component and remove everything inside the return and put an empty tag here here where we want to put our header component so let's create the header component first open up the explorer right click here and select new folder inside the src folder give it the name of components then right click on it and select new folder for the header component then right click on the header folder and select new file header.js here write rfc for creating a functional component and save the file then come back to the app.js and try to add header component here as you can see it helps us on importing the correct header component from the components folder if we press enter it will automatically import it for us but if we remove this and close this header file and try to add the header again it will not help us for having the best auto import right click on the front end folder and create a new file then give it the name of jsconfig.json open curly braces inside the double code select compiler options and inside its curly braces write module resolution and set it to node then at the bottom of it write include src folder to have the module resolution of node we don't need to touch the js config anymore so close it then try to write header again as you can see even without opening the header file we have the auto import suggestion here okay add it now if we go to the browser we see the header here so we can start working on the header let's get back to the code close the app file and open the header js inside the header we want to show bunch of links that goes to a specific route so we need react router dom for handling it so from the terminal select new terminal then go to the front end folder and write npm install react router dom then press enter here we go it is installed now we can use it inside the header inside this course i want to use css modules to keep my components isolated for doing this i need to right click on the header file and create a file with the name of header.module.css remember it should have this module css at the end of it then i need to import all the classes from this header.module.css so instead of using the class names directly as a string we use the classes that comes from the css file by doing this if you have two same class names inside two different components they will not going to have effect on each other so they will be completely isolated okay let us start working on the header component close the explorer and at the first line write const user equal to name john i want to show the username on the header menu but currently we don't have login functionality so we only use a sample name in future lessons when we implemented the login functionality we're going to change this to use the real username same with the cart write const cart set the total count to 10 because we want to show total items inside the card on the header now is the time working on this return part remove everything here and write header as the root 
set its class name to classes.header, then add a div with the class name of classes.container. Now we want to add a link for the logo of the website, that is a text. So write link and select the one from the React Router DOM and press enter and it will be automatically imported here. Set its to property to slash, that is the home page, and set its class name to classes.logo. For its text, write foodmine or your brand name. Now, if you go to the browser, we'll see nothing because we didn't add the browser router as the parent of the link. We want to set it as the parent of everything. So go to the index file and here before the app, write browser router coming from React Router DOM and put our app component inside it. And the app component is the parent of header component, so it's gonna work. Close the index.js, then come back to the browser, and as you can see, we have the foodmine link here. Now let's work on the nav menu. Here, press enter and write nav. Inside the nav, write ul. Here we wanna do a conditional rendering. So if the user is available, we wanna show a menu. Write li, set its class name to menu container this is the parent class of the menu for the menu button we need a link that goes to the profile page with the text of user.name and for the menu drop down we want a div with the class name of menu that has three things inside it the first one is a link that goes to the profile page again but with the text of profile the second one is a link that goes to the orders page with the text of orders. And the last one is an A tag that calls the logout function with the text of logout. We didn't create this logout function yet, so let's create just a dummy function here. To bypass the error in future lesson, when we implemented the login functionality, we are going to implement the logout functionality too. Okay, this menu will be shown when the user is available. But when the user is not available, we need to show a link to the login page. So put a colon here and put a link goes to the login page with the text of login. Save it and here we go. Now let's go to the browser. As you can see, we have the username here and the menu. It's not beautiful because we didn't implement the CSS. It's time for adding the cart. Here, after this conditional rendering, add another li. Here, we want to put a link to the cart page. Write link that goes to the cart page with the text of cart. And here, we want to do another conditional rendering to check if the cart.total count is bigger than zero. Then show and span the cart.total count. So if we have more than zero items, then we are going to have a span with the total items inside the cart. Now, if we go to the browser, since this 10 is more than zero, we are seeing the total count of the cart. Okay, the header HTML is ready. Let's work on its CSS. Go to the header module CSS file and start with header. For the header class, we want its background to be white, so it shouldn't be transparent. Padding should be zero. Its border button should be one pixel, solid, hashtag E72929. For all the eight tags inside the header, their color should be hashtag AF1313. And for their hover effect, their background should be E72929. Their color should be white. And their cursor should be pointer. If you go to the browser, as you can see, when we hover over it, they're going to have a beautiful background and the mouse cursor will be like a pointer. Let's continue. For the container class, I want it to have a margin of zero from top and bottom and auto from left and right. Set its display to flex and set its justify content to a space between. So the logo text and user menu gonna be far from each other as much as possible. 
for the logo text now set its font weight to bold and it's padding to one rem from every side okay it's a little bit bolder and it has padding from all sides now let's work on the ul inside the header let's set its display to flex and remove that bullet so let's list the style type to none by default it has a margin set it to zero we don't want it now for the a tags inside the ul set their padding to one rem and their display to inline block now if we go to the browser we can see that at the top we have our header items and at the bottom we have user menu now let's hide this menu and show it only when we hover over the username here for the menu container set its position to relative and for its child that is menu set its position to absolute we can only use absolute inside a relative parent otherwise the absolute gonna act as a fixed position set its z index to one so it will be top of everything and set its background color to white smoke and set its display to none by default now when we hover over the menu container the menu should be shown so we need to write menu container hover dot menu inside it set its display to block now if we go to the browser we can see when we hover over the menu it will be shown and when we go out it will be hidden now let's make these menu items a little bit bigger and make this 10 here like a badge and more beautiful let's get back to the code write menu and select a tags inside it set its width to 100 percent and set its min width to 8 ram now let's go to the header js as you can see we didn't set any special class to this span so let's give it a class name of classes dot cart underline count then use it inside the css so write cart count and give it a background color of hashtag ff4d4d set its color to white and set its padding 0.1 rem from top and bottom and 0.45 rem from left and right set its border radius to 100 rem to be completely rounded and set its font size to 0.9 rem a little bit smaller now let's come back to the browser and as you can see we have a bigger menu and we have a beautiful badge for the number of items inside the cart okay now we want to publish our code to the github get back to the code and come to the source control as you can see inside the changes we have only the changes that we made inside this project it means that this front end that is our react project is already a git repository we don't want the front end to be a git repository we want the root folder that is the foodman react js to be our git repository for fixing this issue we need to delete the git folder from the front end folder so right click on it and select reveal in finder i think it is reveal in explorer in windows based on your operating system show all the hidden files and delete the dot git folder don't remove the git ignore because we need it to ignore all the unnecessary files and folders now get back to the vs code and if you go to the source control you will see no changes it's the best time to publish your code to the github so click on it by default it is the name of your root folder and that's okay for us select public or private repository based on your preference then press enter select the folders you want to publish ds store it is specific for macOS. i don't want to send it just the front end folder and lessons folder then click on ok now if we go to the repository link in the description below and click on the commits you will see commit 3 create app and header and here you can see all the changes related to this lesson Okay, that was about this lesson. On the next lesson, we are going to implement the thumbnails of the homepage. So if this project is interesting for you, please follow this series and I will see you on the next video.